In other news, brown tide making another comeback in Long Island waters. That's right. In the past, it has devastated the clamming industry in the Great South Bay. News 12 Long Island's Pat Dolan looks at what's causing it and what can be done to stop it in his special report. They're a sun-dazzled summer playground, but some of Long Island's bays are in serious trouble. This is not right, that's for sure. For the sixth consecutive year, brown tide is back. It's disgusting. <laughs> Pretty gross. The latest sightings are in parts of Mariches and Shinnecock Bays. And this spring, thousands of underwater acres were temporarily closed to shell fishing due to the different but related red tide. It's ugly. <laughs> I don't go in. Experts say it is safe to swim in, but it does a number on shellfish. The murky colors are from algae. They're microscopic plant cells that suck oxygen from the water and kill the eelgrass where some species breed. The clams that are here now are st strictly old. After 40 years as a bayman, Ed Warner knows the signs all too well. The clams that come up are all old and large. No young ones are making it. When the brown tide usually blooms, it coincides with the shellfish and their spawning season. My worst fear is I wake up some, some morning and go to go to work and uh, either the bays are closed because of the poor water quality or that there is no, uh, there's no shellfish to catch. Experts say the algae that causes brown and red tide is feeding off excess nitrogen in the water. And in many areas near heavy population, that nitrogen is coming from one major source cesspools and from septic tanks. Marine scientist Dr. Chris Gobler has done some groundbreaking chemical detective work. He and others have found that nitrogen from home septic systems across the island is slowly moving underground and into the bays. The groundwater travels through the aquifer, it's going towards the bay and encounters all the cesspools and septic tanks and takes the nitrogen with it. Backyard cesspools that leach uh, the wastewater down into the groundwater and that groundwater eventually moves toward our creeks and open bays. Upgrading cesspools to eliminate nitrogen would be expensive for homeowners. Baykeeper Kevin McAllister says a good start would be to require state-of-the-art sewage treatment for all new development, especially near the shore. We have a very primitive uh, way of dealing with our wastewater. It's caught up to us now. We cannot continue the status quo. Activists have high hopes for shellfish nurseries that are jump-starting the recovery of the bays. But baymen like Ed Warner say a lot also depends on public awareness. Living on an island, what we put on it eventually does end up in the water. I would hate to catch the last shellfish. Pat Dolan, News 12, Long Island. Well, there are things you can do to help the bays. You can consider an environmentally friendly home septic system. And you can also minimize the use of fertilizer. Pat has more information and links in his blog. To read it, go to news12.com, click on the blogs tab. You'll also find extended interviews on channel 612. Just click on IO Extra once you get there.